Hi, I'm Lou and this is Lily Row, and we love trees all year round. If you do too, then stay tuned because in this video we're going to show you how to recognise different species of tree even when they're standing before you naked without their leaves on. <laughs> As a forest school leader, it's important to know what species are present on your site. This is because you need to know for safety reasons. Some species might be toxic or very thorny or drop their limbs suddenly in the summer. Uh, you also might want to use materials from species such as making things. Some woods are bendy or split more easily or burn better in fires. There are also the conservation reasons we might need to manage our sites appropriately. So knowing whether a particular species coppices well, for example, might be why we need to know about it. A part of forest school training is to do a site survey of the species. But how do you know what trees you have if the leaves aren't on them? If it's winter time, how are you going to recognise them? Luckily, there are other clues on trees other than the leaves to help us Luckily, there are other clues on the trees other than the leaves that will help us identify them. It's just that often these are much smaller and more subtle than the leaves, so we often don't look at them. In this video, we're going to focus in on some of these more subtle features of the trees in winter. And uh, exactly, bubs. <laughs> In this video, we're going to focus in on some of these more subtle features of the trees in winter and I'm going to help show you what to look for so that when you're identifying trees for yourself, you'll know some of the clues that will help you identify it. Just to note, we're not actually identifying specific species in this video, but I hope to make a little series on that coming soon. So this video is more about how you identify so that those skills are generic to all species that you'll be looking for. It's also probably worth me mentioning I'm based in the UK, so this is focusing on UK, mainly native species that are deciduous, so they haven't got their leaves on this time of year. So the key to identification skills is to have good observation skills first. So when you're out looking at trees, really take in the details, really look at things up close and personal, start noticing similarities and differences. Are certain features the same on all parts of that tree? Try to look at more than one individual tree of a particular type so that you get used to looking for patterns, looking for similarities, differences, see if that is generic across that particular type of tree. I find a really good mindset to have is to pretend you're looking at the tree for the very first time, like you're an alien from another planet and you've never seen it before. So take in its amazingness. Look at its twigs and its buds, its bark, what's growing on it, what's around it, and try and gather all that information. Try not to get hung up on the name as the most important aspect, because sometimes naming things can become a barrier to us learning more about them. I'm afraid we live in a bit of a tick box culture, and you know, oh, tick, I know that's an oak tree, so let's move on, can actually prevent us from discovering and observing things about that tree. At Forest School, we might play a variety of sensory games or nature connection games with the children to actually help them start developing their observation skills. And in this way, they might then develop their own curiosity in the world around them and want to discover the names for themselves of the trees at a later date. So a little acronym I want to share with you to help you recognise trees in winter is to sob. <laughs> Not because it's so hard, but because we've got S for silhouette, O for outer bark, and B for buds and twigs. There is also a fourth letter that you can add an S to the end to make it sobs. And that S would be for sight. So let's go through those. 
The first S for silhouette, it could also be for shape and size. So I don't know if you've noticed when you've gone for walks outside and you've seen trees up against a nice horizon that they all have different shapes to them. So some grow straight up and are very narrow. Some are very short or shrub-like. They stay in the understory layer rather than being big canopy species. Some might be multi-stemmed and bushy, whereas others might just have one big chunky main trunk. So the silhouette and shape and size of the tree can sometimes give us clues and be characteristic of a certain tree species. Then there's O for outer bark. So with that, we're looking at the color and the texture of the outer bark. Do bear in mind that as trees grow, they might have bark that looks one way when they're younger, but as they grow older, it might look completely different and even be a completely different color. So when you're looking, try to look at a mix of age ranges of trees to really get to know them. As a tree grows, the outer bark naturally sheds and sometimes the pattern of how the bark sheds can give us clues and be very characteristic for species. So some species like birch, for example, peels uh, and comes off like bits of paper almost. Other species fissure deeply, so like big deep lines and crevices, like your oak, for example, does that. Then other species might shed in plates almost like a snakeskin kind of effect, like different plates might come off of it. So for example, sycamore or London plane trees do that. The other thing to look for on the outer bark are lenticels, which are markings on the tree. It's actually the end of the medullary rays, uh, which is to do with gas exchange in the tree. You don't need to know that for identification, but um, the markings on the trees, little dots or diamond shapes or stripes, so they can be characteristic in certain species. So for example, the horizontal lines on a cherry tree are for lenticels. Then there's B for buds and twigs. So with this, the first thing we're gonna look for is what pattern of orientation are the buds coming off at? Are they coming off in opposite pairs? or are they coming off alternately, like a, a bit of a zigzag, or are they spiraling perhaps up the twig? There are also at the end of each twig, a terminal bud, and these can be singular in some species, or they can be in a cluster in, in other species. Woof, 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 we've been spotted. Nice coat. <laughs> Then at the end of each twig, there'll be the terminal bud. And in some species, there'll be just one bud. And in other species, there'll be a cluster of buds. You also want to look at the shape and size of the buds. Some are quite big and chunky and obvious. Others are really teeny tiny. So there could be quite a difference in shape and size. Some are very pointed, some are very rounded. There is also the bud color as well. They range from charcoal black all the way through to red, bright apple green, even purplish colors in some species. There's also the texture of the buds to think about. Some are silky smooth, others might have hair coming off of them, and some are very sticky when you touch them. Another thing to look for on the buds are the number of bud scales. So each bud has got protective layers, uh, which are called scales, and on different species, they may vary. So some may have only a, a few, two or three bud scales, whereas others might have 20 bud scales. So that can be a feature, but it can be very tricky to see the bud scales just with the naked eye. So you might want to use like either one of those little hand lenses or at Forest School, it, we might have more <laughs> something like this, like a magnifier glass to help us look. So that's a useful kind of piece of kit if you are looking at the buds very closely. You can also get ones like this, which are quite funky because they've got little lights on too. So they help illuminate what you're uh, looking at. And they've got two lenses on them as well with different levels of magnification. So that's quite a helpful piece of kit to have if you're looking at buds. 
So as well as the buds, you can also get some clues from the twig itself. So some things to look for, again, is the outer bark, which on the little twigs, it can be a different colour to the main trunk of the tree. So looking at the twig colour. And again, you might see little lenticels again, which might appear as small spots of a different colour. There are also on the twigs, little markings or scars from where the leaves used to be and sometimes those can be very obvious on certain species so you're looking underneath the buds you'll see the leaf scar of last year's leaf where it's dropped off and so that can be something to look for another little point of interest is on some twigs you'll be able to see what they call the girdle scar which is a scar that goes all the way around the circumference of the twig and that shows you where the last terminal bud was so if you start at this year's terminal bud and you trace it down until you find the girdle scar which is quite obvious on this tree then you know that it's grown that amount this last growing season so you can kind of age a twig by taking it back to its girdle scars then the final S, which I've put as an optional one because it depends on how much information you have about the area that you're looking in, uh, is for sight. So by that, I mean what sort of habitat you're in, but it could also be soil type as well. So certain species tend to grow in only certain conditions. So for example, some trees are really acid loving and they'll tend to be on an acidic soil. Others prefer more of a chalk soil. Others prefer a neutral soil. Some species tend to be only found in wetter conditions along streams or riverbanks or marshy kind of conditions. There is also the geography of where you are in the UK or where you are in whatever country you're in um, because certain trees will have ranges. You also might want to consider altitude. Some species can grow better in those more harsher conditions with poorer soils whereas others need to be in more cushier, cosier climates. So if you're getting into Winter Tree ID, there's a couple of resources that I recommend, both of which have been written by the Field Studies Council as guides to help you with winter tree identification. There's this one, Winter Trees, a photographic guide to common trees and shrubs. That one is um, really accessible. So if you're new to this, I would really strongly recommend this one. The reason I really like this photographic guide is at the start it asks you whether the buds are opposite or alternate on the stem. So it's really accessible, got some really good quality photos here. So here you can see all the species that are opposite. And then if you turn over we can see all the species here that have got an alternate budding pattern. Oh, hello Bubba, you're joining in. <laughs> you like the buds? <laughs> And then it gives you the page of where it will give you more information about that species. So if we flick through and here's something, well, on the left here, we've got about cherry, where it's got a good close up of that bark. If you remember me saying about the lenticels horizontally of the bark there, good close up of the twig and also the silhouette of the canopy as well. And on this side, we've got willow, for example. And then there's this one, a guide to the identification of deciduous broadleaf trees and shrubs in winter. This one's more of a scientific key, so you have to know how to use a key properly to get the most out of that one. So as I mentioned, at Forest School we might play some sensory games that help learners start to notice and observe things. So when it comes to tree silhouettes, there's a game which is from Joseph Cornell's Sharing Nature with Children, and it's actually called Tree Silhouette. And basically the game is, you're in pairs or small groups, and secretly one of you picks a tree around, and then you're going to do an impersonation of it. So let me think. Which tree am I? <laughs> when it comes to appreciating the bark of trees, there's another game that's come from Joseph Cornell, 
um, and that's Meter Tree, which I'm sure many of you have played before, but it's a blindfold game that you play with pairs and the seeing person leads their blindfolded buddy up to a particular tree and encourages them to feel that tree with all their senses. So it's a really tactile game, getting to feel that bark and also maybe feeling the branching patterns if there's branches coming off in opposites or in alternates. And uh, you can get to smell the tree using all of the senses and then they're eventually led away still blindfolded and then the game is to see if they can recognize their tree again once they're blindfolded off so that's another good game that might spark interest in trees with people there's also i guess the traditional good old bark rubbins as well if you've got learners that are interested in art and crafts they might want to take some crayons out and appreciate the different textures of the barks of the trees so we hope that's given you some tips for what to look for for when you're looking at winter trees and that you're able to identify some when you're out and about do you have a favorite activity to do at forest school with winter trees do let me know in the comment section below if you've enjoyed this video do give us a thumbs up and consider subscribing so you can join us in the woods next time and thanks for watching trees in winter are very pretty but identification can be tricky using buds and bark without any leaves give us clues and names to the trees yeah they do bubs